I don't know how you feel in your spirit, but every time I come to Miami and find myself at home here, my jaw is lifted. You can be happy without being lifted. But when you are happy and you are lifted, thank you musicians, Aren't you glad you have a church where Jesus is Lord? Yeah. And that is to the glory of God. I welcome all of you to this place today. Dr. Isaiah and Gloria William know I don't go anywhere God didn't send me. I'm so needed that I can't go everywhere. But wherever I find myself, I know God sent me there. And you are about to hear what will help you to redefine your destiny for the rest of your life. And before I turn to the Bible, I want to please plead with you, sincerely from the depth of my heart, please reject slavery. If any man try to force you to think back, tell him, forgetting the things that are past, I press forward. Point your hand and say, I press forward. Whether they are politicians who promise you food stamps and more welfare, or they are educationists who tell you you were once a slave, or a Christian preacher who says to you, you are meant for doom. Reject Anything that can turn your brain from light to darkness. The devil is not only subtle, he's wicked. As long as he can get glory in your joy of happiness in darkness, he has got you. Some Christians are happy for the darkness they live in. And that's a cause. That's a cause. You must fight more than you can fight cancer and aid. Any human being that tried to take your brain back. It's a disgrace and a disservice to God. Your elections are coming. Vote for righteousness. Are you hearing me? My son will not... Because he, he is here with you. He may not tell you to vote for this, vote for that. But I'm here to tell you, vote for righteousness. Die back in light than to be promoted in darkness. Did you hear what I said? When you support light and they kill you, be happy you died for light than to have promotion in darkness. How many will say Amen. Just because you woke up and say well, two of us are in charge doesn't make you in charge. There's someone bigger than two of you. And his name is Jesus. In, in the world, and particularly in the continent of Africa, I'm not an echo, I'm a voice. Did you hear what I said? Are you ready? Say yes. yes. I didn't hear you. Yes. Try one more time. Yes. Are you ready? Yes. Good. Thank you for dancing. Thank you for jumping. Faith cometh by. Yes. Good. And I want to define the English word as a Bible teacher. Hearing doesn't mean head. I know you love those who tell you, send me 1,000 for my hand. I know you do that. I know you love those who say, if you don't give me $20, we are finished. But there's nothing that is going to help you more than personal knowledge of what you are about to hear. You may have heard good things, but still, what you are about to hear will be improvement on the good you have been. Are you hearing me? 
Don't only pray to be good. Improve on goodness. Because life is not static. Life is a thing of daily improvement. Life is not a thing of stagnancy. It's a flow of water. And Christ is the head of the church. And he says, because I live, you shall live also. For hundreds of years, our people were told back home, be satisfied at where you are. And when God raised me, he said, challenge that. A man that asks you to be happy that you are a slave is a killer. A man that tells you to be happy that he's going to give you loaf of bread does not believe in tomorrow. And you must do, I repeat, do your utmost best to fight whatever will refer your mind backward. God is a God of improvement. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Don't let anyone preach it to you and say, be happy, be satisfied that you are to where you are. Life is not made to remain the same condition. You must daily do your best to improve and increase. May I hear you say amen? amen. John's Gospel chapter 2. I will pick a, a verse or two or three there. And jump to chapter 4 where the message is coming from. Verse 1 of chapter 2. And the third day there was a marriage in Cana of Galilee. And the mother of Jesus was there. And both Jesus was called and his disciples to the marriage. Say the word with me in verse 2. First line. And both Jesus and and both Jesus was called and his disciples. Say that loud. And both Jesus was called and his disciples. Good. Verse 3. And when they wanted wine, the mother of Jesus said unto him, They have no wine. Jesus said in verse 7 unto them, Fill the water pots with water. And they filled them up to the brim. And he said unto them, Draw out now. Say that. Draw out now. Oh my, I didn't hear you. Draw out now. Can you imagine that? That's not my message. I'm just giving you the ice cream on top of the cake. Uh, fill the water pot. Draw out now. Uh, listen to that. Fill it. Take out. Put inside. Get the result. Give your tithe. Give your offering. Expect the result. Uh, put it in the bucket. Take it out. See the answer. It's done already. No need to cry. Amen. Oh, <laughs> it's finished. <laughs> put it inside. Bring it out. Try it. It's good. Did you hear what I'm saying? Draw out now. Say that everybody. Some of you ask God for a miracle, but when he comes, you don't try it. And it's time to try your miracle if he's working already. Verse 11. Read it. Let me hear you. This beginning of miracle did Jesus... Say it again. This beginning of miracle did Jesus in Cana of Galilee. Did you say it? I didn't hear you. Aren't you shocked that he who made all things by him, all things consist, and without him was nothing made that is made, that the Bible will say this beginning? Aren't you shocked that he who made all things, he whom by whom all things were made, and him whom by all things consist, that the Bible will say this beginning of miracle did Jesus. Meaning what? Original miracle of creation, fine. But there's a new miracle beginning for you today. Somebody say amen. amen. Now chapter 4, verse 45. 
Chapter 4, verse 45. This beginning of miracle did Jesus. Thank God he began it. There's no one. Listen to me. Isaiah and Gloria. In, the, in creation, we are told in Genesis chapter 1. You listen to me. Genesis chapter 1, verse 1. What did he say? I beg your pardon? Say it again. In beginning what? God did what? What? Heaven and what? Real. Okay, John chapter 1 verse 1. Let me hear you say it. Pardon? In the beginning was what? The word. The word was with God and the word was God and the word is God. Uh, are you there? Beginning. Say beginning. All right, the third beginning. John chapter 2 verse 11. This beginning. Are you hearing what I'm saying? All right. People who don't believe. In starting afresh, you will die with the origin. You die with what you were used to. People who are used to what they are used to never get used to the unusual. Somebody tell you to sing those Asian Negro songs. Say no. Somebody tell you you are going to be very, very rich in heaven. Say no. Because it's not needed there. You don't need Cadillac in heaven. There's no street for you to ride a car. The streets that are paved with diamond and gold doesn't need the dirty tires of Rolls Royce and Mercedes Benz. So in heaven we need no house, we need no car. That's why everything you need, you have to get it now. Because when you die, that's the end. In the beginning. Did you say beginning? I said, did I hear you say beginning? All right. Which means, as far as you and I are concerned, God is constantly starting what is fresh. He doesn't repeat himself or remain the same. He constantly does something new, new, new. They are new every morning. Great is his faithfulness. Somebody say hallelujah. Bam. Verse 45. Of John chapter 4. Then when he was come into Galilee. Remember we just read how he was invited to Galilee. And I remember that Jesus attended this marriage on invitation. He was not the one marrying. He wasn't the one conducting the marriage. But he was asked to come and he didn't say no. He believes in marriage. He went there. But when they were short of wine... Jesus said to him, son, that's exactly what he said. They have no wine. He looked at Jesus as, as if he was a boy. My boy, my son. I know you can do it. They, have, they are short of something. I'm glad that you can tell him what you don't have. I can tell him what I don't have. <laughs> they are short of wine. But now listen to verse 45. After he did that. Then when he was come into Galilee... The Galileans received him, having seen all the things that he did at Jerusalem, at the feast. For they also went into the feast. Verse 46. So Jesus came again. Say that to everybody. I didn't hear you. Say it loud. So Jesus came again into Cana of Galilee, where he made the waters wine where he made the water wine and there was a certain nobleman whose son was sick at Capernaum when he had when he heard that Jesus was come out of Judea into Galilee he went into him unto him and besought him that he would come down and heal his son now let's start from verse 46 Hmm. So Jesus came again. Say that to everybody. Aren't you glad that if you miss him the first time, he's come now the second time? <laughs> ah, he came again. Listen to that. When he first came, many of us were in there, but he's coming the second time. <laughs> When he came to that little wedding room, only few came to take part in that marriage. But I'm glad he came again. 
Did you hear what I'm saying? <laughs> the fact that God once walked, they may he doesn't walk again. The fact that God once healed, shouldn't stop healing. The fact that God once blessed. You see, I, I was saying to one of our ministers here who, who came to pick me at the airport yesterday. See, when things are good, it's good for you to have faith. But that doesn't need proof too much. When everybody have good money, good income, good job, everything in town going well, you jump and say, have faith. That's not the time to have faith. That's why 90% of big ministers in this country can't go to anywhere to preach. Because they don't believe in times of roughness. They've never tested suffering, so they don't know how to come out of it. Did you hear what I'm saying? But well, my son can tell you, by the time you come home and see what we do with nothing, then you come again. Why do I need faith if I have 1,000 in my pocket and the food I'm about to buy is 600? There's no need. But if I have $5 and my rent is 5,000, uh -huh, I need God. <laughs> See, you don't need welfare if you can fight warfare. He came again, say that. Say it again. All right, let's go to the Bible. He came again. All right. I like this. Just listen to it. So Jesus came again into Cana of Galilee, where he made the water wine. And there was a certain nobleman. Now if you go to chapter 2, you will find that in that marriage, there was a man they called the governor of the feast. I believe that this is he. The noble man was giving wine to drink that came from water. Now his son, one and only son, sick. He inquired from doctors. What do I do? Doctors told him, try this. Three tablets in the morning, two in the afternoon, two in the evening. He tried it. The son got from bad to worse. He tried injection, worse. He tried sleeping pills, worse. He tried Everything that could be tried, it got worse. Now he opened his ears and heard, when he had heard, when he had heard that Jesus was come from Judea to Jerusalem and to Cana Galilee. Bazama. He heard, say that he heard. Things don't change when you are willing to change. Nothing in your life will change if you refuse to change. God wants us to change from good to better, from bad to good, from darkness to light, from poverty to prosperity, from shortage to surplus. Someone say hallelujah. hallelujah. This is why Jesus came again. He came and this noble man heard he had come. When he had heard that Jesus was come out of Judea into Galilee, he went unto him. Listen now. He heard, he went. Say that. He heard, he went. Try it again. He heard, he went. I didn't hear you. He heard, he went. Now he said Jesus is around. He's in town. He's now in Cana, Galilee. Oh, wow. Let's go. He heard. Say that. He, he came. He Try it. He heard, he no matter how good what you hear is, if you don't move, Have you heard people say, remember me in prayer? I'm not going to remember. <laughs> Why did you forget? <laughs> Common sense. 
Remember me in prayer. Why did you forget? If you forgot, why do I have to remember? Are you still with me? It's not enough to say remember me in prayer. It's better you remind yourself that the Bible says pray ye for one another. If you give, it come back. If you sow, you reap. But if you eat your seed, you never have harvest. Whether it's money or love or kindness or anything. Anything. The reason this church will never be small is that she thinks of giving every day. And a giving church is a growing church. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. He heard. The noble man heard. Now God gave him status. But he refused to turn his status to statue. Many people get status and they turn to statue. They say, you're going to church, tell your pastor to pray for me. It's not a statue because God gave him status. It's too big to move from the house. And when they come to church and everybody is dancing, these statues remain there. They say, when you finish, you let me know. What evil has your good position caused in your life? Have you become so big that the ground can't receive you? Have you become so big that you are no more excited? Remember, he has power to lift kings and he has power to put them down. The Bible did not say your money is your strength. He said, the joy of the Lord is my strength. He came. He bowed down. Luke said, he knelt down. Matthew said, he bowed down. And Mark said, he lay flat. And besought him, saying, come down. Say that to everybody. Please say it loud. Come down. Say it again. Come down. Say it one more time. Come down. When well, you have need, son, don't leave God upstairs. Tell God, come to where I am. That's prayers. When you are able to invite God from heaven to your situation here, that's answer to prayer. He said, Jesus... Everybody come to church to drop their tithe and offering. But said today, that's not what I need. You as a master, follow me home. Yeah. Won't you look forward to the day you are not just satisfied for dropping tithe cards and dropping tithe envelope and dropping offering. But you can say, master, I have dropped my money. I have dropped myself. But I want you to follow me to my house. Do you know when Jesus comes, darkness flees. When Jesus comes, sickness leaves. When Jesus comes, sorrow leaves. When Jesus comes, poverty leaves. When Jesus comes, every pain in body, soul, and spirit disappear for God to appear. Somebody say hallelujah. He said, come down. Many of us are not able to bring God down. But this man said, I have come, you come. So if two of us shall agree, it shall be done. Now my question, when was the last time God came down to your house? Are you just in the church looking at your watch? The only time Jesus talked of watch, he said, whenever you look at it, he said, pray. Watch and pray. <laughs>
come down and heal his son. For he was at the point of death. Look at this noble man. Think of it, you people. This is not Rose Poirot talking to you people. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm talking to Jesus people. Are you a Jesus child? Are you a child of God? Okay. <laughs> he saw that there was something in Christ that is not in his money. Think about that. Come heal him or else he will die. His son, his only son, he looked at his treasury, he looked at his treasure, he saw his money. He said, money can do this. But Lord, you come and heal him. He didn't say come and pray. He said come and heal him. Did you hear what I'm saying? Tell God exactly how you feel. Don't tell him to gaze at your problem. Tell him to take it away. Did you hear what I'm saying? Come follow me home, master. When you get there to my house, come and heal him. Come. He's at the point of death. What did this tell you and me? Anything at the point of death doesn't need man. He needs God. When your situation is at the point of collapse, don't call committee. Call God. When you reach the state of desperation, don't go to people weaker than you. Look for God Almighty. He is the cure. Of the incurable. He is the one who meets all our needs. Do you know as bad as the world is. God is still good. Yeah. Are you hearing me? Yeah. Verse 48. Then said Jesus unto him. Except ye see signs. And wonders. You will not believe. That's good. Now Jesus for, for years. For 30 years I preached this place. I'm 33 years and 10 months old in the ministry. But you know, I thought in the past that Jesus was saying, you are an unbeliever. You are not going to believe unless you say, Jesus wasn't saying that. He said, you, you, are, a, you are a noble man. You are not going to take nonsense for an answer. You don't need suggestion. You need reality. Now that it is signs and wonders you need to believe, I'm going to show you something. This man, send up Joe, he's a professor in the university. If you tell him that John 3.16 says what he didn't say, it's very hard to convert educated people. So you don't give them nonsense for senseful things. Because they have mind to think. So Jesus said, as a noble man, I know you are not here for ordinary things. You need signs and wonders to believe. Do you hear what I'm saying? And he wasn't one of those black people running after a miracle that is not there. Now one of those white people who says, send me 500 and then you get a miracle. He was a noble man. Say noble. noble. Say it again, noble. noble. Try it again, noble. So Jesus said, I know how to treat a man like you. You need proof with substance 
before you believe. Listen to verse 49. Read verse 49. Thank you, Joe. 49, want to go? The noble man said, the noble man said unto him, what? Sir. Say that again. Sir. Say it again. Sir. Oh, God, mama. Stand to your feet. Let me tell you what it means. Look me eyeball to eyeball. The noble man said, What did the noble man say? Sir. Try it again. Sir. He said, You who is higher than what brought me here. I am big, but you are bigger. I am rich, but you are richer. I'm high, but you are the highest. Sir, say that to everybody. Sir, you need a sir for all your situations. Sir, try it again. Sir. That's whom you need when things are rough. The man that the devil recognizes as big enough not to harass him but to cast him out can somebody say amen, amen. sir <laughs> come down and my child die say that now if jesus was condemning this man the man wouldn't have changed from come ordinarily to sir sit down so you can see me well there are times to pray guessing prayer. There are times you pray, maybe God heard me. But brothers and sisters, when situations are terrible, look for a terrific God. You didn't hear what I said. When things get off hand, get a man who holds heaven and earth in his hands. When things are rough and things are dreadful, don't look for a man who is more afraid than you. Look for him who commands and even the sea and the wind obey him. <laughs> Say, sir. <laughs> I didn't hear you, sir. <laughs> Try it again, sir. He said, this man said, I know. The situation is terrible. But when you follow me, sir, it will become terrific. I know what you have said. And because you've said that, come down. I'm here today to challenge you. Take God home. Don't leave him in the church. Don't come bad and go worse. Come in tears and go in cheers. Come in pain and go with gains. Come with sorrow, hallelujah, and go with hallelujah. Come bending and go strong. Come crying and go laughing. Say hallelujah. hallelujah. He says, sir, follow me. I've heard. Now let's go. I know you. Let's go. I've seen you. Let's go. You can do it. Let's go. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. I love people who want to take Christ home. I don't know if you understand what I'm saying this morning. It's not enough to come to the church. Then when devil say, hey, you say, oh, bye, bye, bye. No. I don't want to jump in the church and bow at home. I 
I want to be able to look outside and say, the Lord is inside. Say hallelujah. Jesus on the inside, walking on the outside. Say hallelujah. Come Lord, my son, with that. Come quickly. Let's see. Hmm. Now, Pastor Isaiah, when Clayton begin to call you sir, when Bush begin to call you sir, when Rossboro begin to call you sir, you know their money is no more enough. Are you hearing me? That's the position God has placed me in at home. When you have authority, noble men bow. When you have Jesus, devil bow. When you have Jesus, sickness bow. When you have Jesus, poverty bow. When you have Jesus, fear bow. When you have Jesus, doubt bow. Set Jesus home and the devil shall bow. Some jump up and say hallelujah. Sir, come home with me. Say, Jesus, come home with me. Follow me home. Come down. Remain standing. Remain standing. Remain standing. Here is a noble man. The Bible says he is a noble man. But he saw a nobler. He saw a man more noble than himself. I said, only you can come home. To stop death in my house. Don't come to the church just for jumping. Take the head of the church home. Don't have Christmas and forget the Christ of Christmas. Don't give tithe and offering and forget the man who gave you his life. Because if you remember he gave you his life. No money you get is too big to give to his work. Are you hearing me say yes? yes. Sir, come home. No. Say it, everybody. No. I didn't hear you. No. Try it one more time. Come. No. Amen. Verse 49. The nobleman said unto him, Sir, come down, see. Or else my son died. Jesus said unto him, Go thy way. Sit down now, everybody. Sit down, sit down, sit down, sit down. Go thy way. Say it loud. I didn't hear you. Go thy way. Go thy, way thy son leave it. Turn around. Begin to go. What you left dying. It's alive while you are here with me. Go thy way, pastor. Go thy way. Thy son, leave it. What you thought was wrong when you left home is now right since you left. He said you came sad. Go jumping. You came downcast. Go uplifted. You came poor. Go, you are now rich. You thought things are bad at home. But since you left home to come to me, I've made it well. Go thy way. Thy son, leave it. God is telling you this morning. Where there's no way, you can make a way. The noble man made a way for himself. Go jumping. You came downcast. Go uplifted. You came poor. Go, you are now rich. You thought things are bad at home. But since you left home to come to me, I've made it well. Go thy way. Thy son, leave it. God is telling you this morning. Where there's no way, you can make a way. 
the noble man made a way for himself in time of great distress. While all that we are saying, try oxygen. Try. Try the heart machine. Try the thing to kick him up. He said, I know where to go. If I see that man who turned water to wine, my son will not die. And Jesus says, time for you. When everybody says there's no way, things are rough because you are dark, you are yellow, you are brown, you are white. That's why the road is closed. He said, make a way where there's no way. If nobody employ you, employ yourself. If you have sent mine, don't put it in dustbins. Take your sound mind and do something great with it. Don't look at yourself with pity. Ah. Look at yourself and say, God made me his image and in his likeness. You know what that means, Prophet Isaiah? It means if nobody likes me, God likes me. He made me his image. He made me in his likeness. Why you are thinking whether you like me or not? God likes me. Take your eyes from your color and put it in your color. The one who called you is better than your color. Take your eyes. From the news of the world, I hear what God is saying. This is the day I have made for you to rejoice and be glad in it. Go thy way. Thy son. The Lord is telling somebody this morning. Something you thought is bad at home before you left. Is repaired right now. The job you left on Friday. In distress, you are going back tomorrow to see it healed by God. It's done already. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Go thy way. Listen, go thy way. Thy son liveth. Somebody say amen for that. Yeah. Verse 15. Go thy way. Thy son liveth. And the man believed. Did you hear that? Did you hear that? The man believed. The word that Jesus has spoken unto him. And he went his way. Verse 52. Verse 51. Verse 51. Now I can ask you to stand up again. Let me ask you a question before I preach this verse. Do you believe in divine intervention? Yeah. I didn't hear you. Yeah. Do you believe that when Christ comes, things change. Yes. Do you believe that what your money can do, what the government cannot do, that Jesus can do it? Yes. Do you believe that there's a power bigger than all powers in the world? Yes. Do you believe that he's the light of the world? Yes. Do you believe he's a death and resurrection? Yes. Do you believe he can do for you what no man can do for you? Yes. Say yes! yes! Verse 51. That's what brought me to Miami. And as, him, as he was now going, let me hear you say the word going. going. He came. And now going. He never left until Jesus said go. He was now going. And Jesus said, Go. And he added, Going. Going. His servants met him 
and told him, saying, Thy son liveth. What you thought died has come alive. What was bad when you left home? And you listen to me, saints, listen to me, saints. When you took the step of faith and came to church, God went to your house and healed it. When you left your house, you left problems, you left worries, but God, the bright and morning star, went to your house and healed your child. Somebody shout hallelujah. Your son, leave it. Your job, leave it. Your marriage, leave it. Your husband, leave it. Your wife, leave it. Your child, leave it. Your job, your situation has received a change. When you left it to go to God, God sent power. To change the situation. For when we change our position, God changed the situation. Is somebody hearing what I'm saying? Now listen to verse 52. Then, read it, let me hear you. Then he inquired. Quiet, 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 quiet. Your Bible is not as good as mine. Then inquired he of them the hour when he began to amend. And they said unto him, Yesterday. Everybody say, Yesterday. Look at me, I bought to Bible. Say, Yesterday. Say to your neighbor, Yesterday. Say to your friend, Yesterday. Dr. Isaiah, come here. Come here. Gloria, doctor, come here. Everybody say yesterday. yesterday. Say it loud. Yesterday. yesterday. Point your hand and say to me, yesterday. yesterday. God is telling me to tell you both to tell the church what we are begging God today has been done yesterday. He's done yesterday. Your pain ended yesterday. Your sorrow ended yesterday. Your fear ended yesterday. Your disappointment ended yesterday. Your cast down ended yesterday. Your luck ended yesterday. Your fear ended yesterday. Your sickness ended yesterday. From yesterday, things have changed. Wave your hand and shout hallelujah. So my question to you is, when did God change your home? Yesterday. When did he give you a better job? Yesterday. When did he mend your marriage? Yesterday. When did he touch your children's life? Yesterday. When did he change your whole life around? Yesterday. Everybody say, yesterday! Stop crying today for what God has done yesterday. The building finished yesterday. I said the building finished yesterday. Your disappointment finished yesterday. Your grief ended yesterday. Your tears ended yesterday. Your sorrow ended yesterday. Your disappointment ended yesterday. What you are trying to kneel down to ask God today in tears. Jesus asked me to tell you. When you left home yesterday, he did it for you today. And what you are asking him today has been finished yesterday. Somebody say yesterday. yesterday. Say it loud. Yesterday. Do you understand what I'm telling you? What you are asking God for today, he has done it since yesterday 
The devil is trying to tell you it's worse. But God finished it yesterday. Look at it. See the way God sees it. And nothing is as bad as you think. Because God has finished it yesterday. Put your Bible down. You are going to thank him for what he has done for you since yesterday. Raise your hand and begin to thank him. Lift up your hands and begin to bless the Lord. Open your mouth and begin to thank him. Open your mouth wide. He's done since yesterday. Your tears over yesterday. Your pain over yesterday. Your sins over yesterday. Whatever the enemy meant for evil, yesterday God took care. Open your mouth. Open your mouth. Open your mouth. Open your mouth. Thank <laughs> you.